Hi there guys and welcome back to the workshop. So in today's video I've got a couple of things to cover. Like I said in the previous video I'm going to be showing you guys my new invention that is going to be the next series in the, on the channel. So that I'm going to be covering near the end of this video. But at the start of today's video I want to do like an unboxing and review on the new chop saw that I've just bought. So I've bought an Evolution chop saw in the hope that when I cut box section, angle iron, things like that, it's going to make it a lot quicker and a lot easier to chop up. So I'm going to start off today by unboxing this beast and giving you my first impressions on it and maybe doing some trial cuts and just seeing how that goes on. And just one more quick thing before we get into the unboxing. If you like what you see on this channel, please hit subscribe and just drop a comment below, just send subscribe. Maybe it'd be really cool if you just put like the area of the world you're from as well and I'll reply straight back to you and yeah, see what you like about the channel. So moving away from that, let's unbox this chop saw and see what it's all about. So this is an unboxing of the Evolution S355 CPS. Let's get this bad boy open. Woohoo! So before we open this, I just want to run through a few technical things that this chop saw can do and the reasons that I bought it. So we'll literally go through what's on the front of the box and hopefully that can help anyone that's thinking about buying one of these chop saws or something similar. So let's go through the really important facts really. So the blade is a 355 mil blade. So a fair, fair good size. Um, it says on their website that it's got a carbide tipped blade on it. So we'll check out the quality of that in a minute when we unbox it. The overall weight of this, this is actually like a really heavy chop saw. So on the box it says it's 23 kilos. And carrying this through to the workshop, I can feel that it is actually like, it is 23 kilos. It's not lying about that. That is genuinely roughly what it is. This thing is a hefty bit of kit. So if you're thinking about using this as like an everyday moving around chop saw, it's probably not for you. Um, I'm not going to be able to set it up in a permanent home just because of the size of my workshop. But if you can set it up somewhere and just leave it, it's probably best because you don't really want to be lugging this around, getting it out every time you need to use it. So a few other little facts on there. So when I was reading up about this chop saw, it seems like the maximum box section it can cut is just a smidge under five by five inch box section. So that is a hefty bit of box section to be able to cut through. Also, as it says in the front of the box here, it can cut through 12 mil thick steel. Um, I might test that at a later date because I think 12 mil is quite small. I reckon if you went easy with the cutting, you might be able to go a bit more than that. But that is something I won't be able to tell you for sure until I've actually tested it and tried that out. But other than that, it's going to be pretty much your generic um, chop saw. Like I said, you can adjust the angle of cuts up to 45 degrees. So that's really helpful for making up um, square rectangular sections. Other than that, let's open it up now and see what the packaging's like, see what the actual condition of the chop saw comes in. So first of all, I need a knife to open this. Where is a knife? <sighs> Can't seem to find a knife anywhere. Oh, this might do. Yeah, pretty decent knife that. Oh. So, the chop saw, hefty safety manual, probably a lot of do's and don'ts in there. Will not be needing that. Ugh. Nice. All right, let's pull this out if I can. Bloody hell, that's, that's heavy. Oh. Oh. OK, 
table tie there. I don't want more people then use an angle grinder to open stuff up. So much easier. Right, let's get this up on the bench and have a good look at it. So it would appear straight out of the box, this thing looks like it's pretty much ready to go. So there's a few attachments and accessories you get in the box which you might want to fit depending on what you're doing. I'm going to say this, first of all, is something you're probably going to want to fit. So this slides in the back of the chop saw as like a little twist lock to stop it pulling out. Basically just a drip tray to collect all your swarf in. Probably really handy if you're trying to keep your workshop fairly clean. So that will be getting fitted in a second. Right, this next attachment is for cutting like tubing, pipe work. So I'm going to open up the chop saw and just quickly show you how that goes in. Just in case you're wondering exactly where this drip tray or swarf collection tray goes, it just slides in there, pushes in, twist 90. And that's in there now. Really simple way of collecting your metal swarf. Let's turn this beast around. You know what, I feel like on this channel we're getting quite personal now. So let's move you in a little bit closer. You feel a bit distant there. So this is the chop saw table itself. You've got this little pin here which you pull that out and that lets you um, release the chop saw. So, if you're ever gonna use this attachment that comes with it, really simple. All it does, just slide over there. You can move it up and down, I suppose, wherever you want it. Put your pipe in there and then just butt it up against that. Really simple bit of kit. So let's quickly go over the table and what you're gonna need. Straight out of the box, something I've realized about this which is really good, it's got like a quick release mechanism here. So you can pull it back, set it to where you want, and then instead of winding it in, you can push it in, butt it up to where you need it to, and then clamp it the last final bit. So that's a pretty neat bit of kit actually. That's gonna make chopping big box section so, so much easier. So, quickly moving on to setting your angles. So at the back here, you've got this locking pin. And you've also got this locking bolt here, which you, if you undo that, don't have to undo it all the way, just a little bit. You can then release this bolt and you can swing this to where you need. So if you want 45 degrees, the angles are all shown here and you just literally line it up to where you want it and obviously lock it down. Something pretty cool about this handle as well, if the handle's in the way from where you've put it, you can actually lift the handle up and just turn it round. It's got cutouts so you can move it any way you want so it's not in the way. So that, that's pretty cool, a little, little attachment that. And just like that, you set it back to zero. All locked in and away we go. So that's pretty much all the features you need to know about this chop saw really. Obviously the handle and everything else is pretty straightforward. Pull it down, release the safety and pull the trigger in. Um, if I pl get this plugged in now and I can fire it up and you can listen to how like noisy it is. Um, see if you think this is going to be for you. If you want like a quiet way of cutting then a chop saw is probably not the way forward for you maybe consider a band saw but yeah i'll uh, plug this in and we'll see what it sounds like this is just a bit of two by one box section that i've got looks to be about three to five mil let's clamp it up and see how it goes oh i forgot to mention 
One of the reasons I went with this chop saw as well, rather than like a DeWalt or Draper or something like that, is the bed of this chop saw is Cast Alley, which I've been told is much better than the other chop saws. Just a lot of the other chop saws use like a pressed metal base, so after time it can get a bit weak, a bit um, flexible, where this is al already, I can tell, it's absolutely solid. So that should give much better rigid cuts. So with all this clamped down, don't forget to turn the power on. Power back on. Right, this is gonna be really noisy, but let's see what quality of cut it gives us. That cut is pretty much how they said on the website. There's like no burrs at all on that. I tell you what, I'm really impressed by that. That is like a burr free cut, dead straight. I'd be able to just clean that up and weld it straight away now. So that is amazing. Just thought this might be something worth sharing with you guys in case you ever need to change the blade and you're unsure on how to do that. So you can literally do it all with the Allen key that they provide. Just slacken off this bolt here, slacken off this bolt here, and this plate pivots out the way to get access to the bolt to undo that. So just trying to undo it, it's gonna spin the motor. So round here, this black thing here is a lock. So when it's in the right position, you can lock it down and then use that Allen key to undo that. So quick summary on the Evolution chop saw that I bought. First impressions are really good. I'm like amazed at how well that cut that box section is unbelievable. Like it's dead straight cut, no burrs. So I'm super happy about that. And just generally overall, the chop saw seems like really good quality. Um, super happy with how solid the bez is and actually really happy with how easy it is just to adjust everything to get your cuts set up ready to go. Like with the lathe review video that I've done, I'm not going to be able to tell you guys whether you should buy this one or how long it's going to last because I just don't know until I've actually tried it and tested it out. Um, with the Warco lathe, obviously I've had a few issues which, you know, it's just one of those things, stuff like this happens. The aftercare team with Walco have been pretty good. So all in all, I'm gonna say the lathe was a good purchase and really good for the channel. The Evolution Chop Saw. So it does come with a three year warranty. So I'm hoping that Evolution will be just as good customer service as Walco. And if I get any problems with this, hopefully they'll sort it out. But fingers crossed, we don't get any problems. So generally, the Evolution Chop Saw, straight out of the box, seems like a really good bit of kit. And if you're thinking of buy that, buying one, I would probably say, just go for it. Right, enough of the Chop Saws. I know you guys want to know what the next project is. So, <laughs> I'll be back in a second. I'm going to go bring it in. In the meantime, drop a comment below and just let me know what you think my next project's gonna be. So, I'm gonna go get that, and I shall be right back. Mobility scooter has landed. So I've been sitting on this project now, trying to keep quiet for a good couple of months. I wanted to get all my little projects done and out of the way. And finally, I can show to you the next big project on the channel. So what are we doing with it? At the minute, this thing is really, really slow. 
does go forwards and it does go backwards, but it does that at a super, super slow rate. So what I intend to do is rip all the batteries out, rip all the motor out and stick the old trusty pit bike 125 engine in here and see if we can get this beast to go above 60 miles an hour. So that is what is going to be happening. So just to lay it out there for you guys that are watching, because I know I've got a lot of new subscribers recently from like the lathe and machining world. So I want to try keeping the best of both worlds. So what I'm going to try doing, if I can, is once a week I'll be posting a video about the mobility scooter. And then the following week I'll be posting a lathe like machining build video. Because there's a few skills I want to get dialed in on the lathe. Uh, thread cutting getting like tapered cuts down better, getting uh, curved cuts, things like that. So yeah, I'm gonna try doing maybe a video a week on the lathe and then the following, video, the following week, a video with the mobility scooter. Because this thing's gonna be quite a big project for me on this channel anyway. Uh, the engine that I've chosen, it's a manual four speed kickstart so that is going to involve um, a lot of routing of cables and things. So I'm going to have to route a clutch on this one. I'm going to have to route some gear linkage, which for the drift charge I didn't have to do because that was just like a twist and go. So yeah, I hope you're super stoked about this one like I am. Drop a comment below just saying how excited you are. And I'll see you in the next one where I shall be... I'm going to be on the lathe I think in the next one. So I'm going to be learning to cut threads in the lathe waiting for some parts to turn up for this so thank you for watching this video i hope you enjoyed the content if you want to see more videos of me working on the lathe and around the lathe then click up here and if you want to see other videos from crazy inventions from the workshop then click down here and as always don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment saying subscribe see you in the next one